for the better part of 50 years, American archaeology was locked in a dogma that they called Clovis first. However, this theory is now thoroughly debunked. The ancestors of Oceania's Aboriginal peoples were the first humans to make an open water migration as early as 70,000 years ago. A growing number of archaeologists believe the first Americans arrived by sea as well. Ancient fish hooks and fish bones, dated to around 11,000 years ago, have been excavated on Santa Rosa Island in California and on Cedros Island in Baja, California. The fish hooks are designed to catch deep ocean fish, such as tuna, requiring the use of boats, in ancient times. The fish hooks represent a major advancement in maritime technology, one that was necessary for the spread of people around the Pacific Basin. People were able to quickly spread to a much wider geographical zone, much earlier than has been estimated. Astonishingly, similar fish hooks have been found in Japan and Indonesia, suggesting a sophisticated ancient maritime tradition, dating back to at least 50,000 years ago. Westerners had several theories about the first peoples of the Americas before the 20th century, but it wasn't until the 1930s that archaeologist Edgar Howard discovered evidence of them. Howard discovered an ancient spear tip near Clovis, New Mexico. The well-designed projectile was sharp enough to pierce thick megafauna hide, while remaining small enough to fit in the palm of an adult's hand. Its shape had not deteriorated during its underground slumber, and the manner in which it was interred, among a scattering of mammoth bones, preserved its purpose. The Clovis point was not an isolated finding. These big game killing spear tips were discovered all over North America, in the decades that followed. The oldest was discovered around 13,500 years ago and appeared to be evidence of the continent's first material culture, at the time of its discovery. Clovis Point's abundance and geographic distribution suggest rapid colonization. For decades, scientists assumed that this colonization began when the Clovis people crossed the grassland steppe that connected Siberia and Alaska at the time. They swept down into the North American interior, after the rollback of two ice sheets opened a new corridor east of the Rockies. The Americas were the last of Earth's major land masses to be seen by humans, aside from Antarctica. According to the Clovis first theory, the continent would have been wide open for exploration and teeming with megafauna. The journey of the Clovis hunters sweeping down from the north was easy to imagine. If they took this route, it must have seemed like divine intervention when the frozen white wall of ice sheets to the south parted, revealing an endless series of spectacular landscapes teeming with megafauna that had yet to be frightened by a human spear. The Clovis quickly spread east to the Atlantic coast, west to California, and south through Central and South America, chasing mammoths, mastodons, and giant bison. According to one theory, they depleted the bounty along the way by hunting most of America's megafauna to extinction. For decades, the Clovis First paradigm was an axiom of Native American archaeology, making its way into school textbooks and being virtually written in stone. A competing theory, however, has recently gained the respect of the field's senior scientists. In 1979, a Canadian archaeologist proposed that humans traveled along the west coast of the Americas on small boats before the inland corridor opened for the Clovis people. The first Americans, according to this archaeologist, were not the storied big game hunters of popular culture. For decades, the new theory was dismissed, but in 1997, archaeologists excavated Monteverde, a coastal site that is roughly 14,500 years old, a full 1,000 years older than any Clovis site. Its previous occupants didn't seem to be big game hunters, due to their diet and tools. They were expert seafarers who ate otters, shellfish, and strips of seaweed dried over a campfire at a site called Monteverde. But Monteverde is located in Chile. If people lived in South America 14,500 years ago, they must have started their journey south from Beringia, the region that connects Siberia, Alaska, and the Yukon, long before the Clovis speared their first American mastodon. Then, a group of the world's most prominent experts in Clovis First archaeology flew down to Chile to see the Monteverde site for themselves. 
Many of the archaeologists had worked at Clovis sites in the past and, therefore, had a vested interest in preserving the dogma of Clovis first. This group was dubbed the Clovis Mafia by some. Despite this, nine of their names appeared on a consensus paper confirming that Monteverde was a pre-Clovis site after they returned from Chile. Meanwhile, sites in North America also contradict the Clovis first theory. A male skeleton on Santa Rosa Island, in California, is 13,500 years old. People arrived in North America less than 500 years before he died on that remote island, if you believe the Clovis first theory. If his ancestors were Clovis people, it would have taken them only a few centuries to travel thousands of miles from Beringia to California. Given Clovis' rapid expansion, this isn't entirely implausible, but if they did go this route, they would have to quickly abandon their existing hunting tools and develop a sophisticated set of coastal technologies, including boats and fish hooks. The location of skeletal remains on an island gives us a hint as to the culture's potential sophistication. Because there were fewer carbon molecules floating in Earth's atmosphere during the Ice Age than there are today, more sunlight bounced off the planet's surface and back into space, and much of the water on the planet was trapped in thick ice sheets. Sea levels plummeted to the point where some California shores stretched dozens of miles further out to sea than today. Although the channel between the island and the mainland had narrowed, it was still six miles wide and too treacherous for people to swim across. Thus, the man's presence on the island, 13,000 years ago, is the oldest evidence of the use of watercraft in America, and a direct contradiction to Clovis I. There are several theories as to how the first people traveled along the Alaskan coast by boat. Anecdotal evidence comes from the surviving Bella Bella oral tradition in British Columbia, Canada, as recorded by Franz Bors in 1898. The legend states, in the beginning there was nothing but water and ice and a narrow strip of shoreline. Some believe this story describes the environment of the northwest coast during the last deglaciation. These explorers would have seen the edge of the Cordilleran ice sheet, the white wasteland that stretched hundreds of miles inland, as they looked over the port side of their small boats towards Alaska. You can imagine a brave few setting out from some remote cove south of the Arctic Circle, into the great unknown. The first thousand miles south would have been extremely dangerous. Grey whales along the coast, bowheads, right whales, and orcas roaming the deeper waters, in abundances that defy all modern experience, would have lurked in the boat's midst. The Kelp Highway hypothesis addresses how humans could have colonized the Americas before the ice sheet retreated, allowing for terrestrial migration. Coastal migrations and settlements happened in higher latitudes, where coastal ecosystems would be more productive because of geography and upwelling in the northern Pacific Rim. The different kelps of the Pacific Rim are major contributors to the areas of productivity and biodiversity and support a wide variety of life such as marine mammals, shellfish, fish, seabirds, and edible seaweeds that would also support a coastal community of hunter-gatherers. Archaeological sites from the Pacific Northwest to Baja California have offered more evidence to suggest the coastal migration theory. Sites in the North Pacific have been discovered and researched to help develop a baseline of early coastal colonization data. Further evidence to support the coastal migration hypothesis has been found in the biological viability of regions after deglaciation. The deglaciation of the Pacific Coastal Corridor allowed for biological productivity, availability of food resources, and an accessible migration route for early colonization. More evidence of a coastal ecology sufficient to support early coastal migrants comes from zoo archaeological finds along the northwest coast. Goat remains as old as 12,000 years ago have been found on Vancouver Island, British Columbia as well as bear remains dating to 12,500 years ago in the Prince of Wales archipelago in British Columbia. Even older remains of black and brown bear, caribou, sea birds, fish, and ringed seal have been dated from a number of caves in southeast Alaska. This means that there were enough land and floral resources to support large land mammals and, theoretically, humans. 
Further intertidal and underwater investigations may produce sites older than 11,000 years ago. Coastal occupation prior to 13,000 years ago would allow for people to migrate further south and account for the early South American sites. The North American Pacific coast was likely colonized before 13,000 years ago, largely based on watercraft evidence from Japan. Dietary evidence from middens in Indonesia indicates the development of offshore fishing, requiring watercraft, between 35,000 and 40,000 years ago. Seagoing cultures were mobile in the island-rich environment off the late Pleistocene coast of East Asia, facilitating the spread of marine technology and skills from Indonesia, through the Philippines, and north to Japan and beyond. Warming of the climate after about 16,000 years ago could have provided an impetus for seaborne migration up the Kurile Island chain towards North America, through some combination of a more hospitable climate and increased ocean productivity. Although no boats have been recovered from early Pacific coast archaeological sites, this may be due to poor preservation of organic materials and the inundation of coastal areas mentioned above. We can still infer water travel, based on the presence of artifacts made by humans found at island sites, 